All right, here's our last example for the lesson. Um, it's going to be on writing vertex form when a does not equal 1. So we are going to complete the square like we've been doing the whole lesson, um, but there's an added step when a does not equal 1. So we've got this embedded in a word problem, but it, it will be the same math, so you'll recognize what we're doing. Astronauts train for flying in zero gravity using a special plane that flies in parabolic arcs. The graph shown approximates the altitude A in meters of a plane in relation to the time T in seconds during a training session. So you can see the plane goes up, kind of parabola, comes back down. What is the maximum altitude reached by the plane? Well, altitude is a height measurement, so that's right here. How high does this get? At what time does the plane reach the maximum height? So how many seconds does it take? That's going to be an x value for the plane to reach the maximum height. That will be the y value. And essentially, we want the vertex here. So we can complete the square to put this into vertex form. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite the equation. We have a equals negative 5t squared plus 80t plus 9,000. Now, if you notice, um, it's, set, it's not set equal to zero right now. We have a variable over here. So I can't just divide everything by negative 5 because that would create a fraction on this side, an a over negative 5. And we don't really want to go there with this. So we're going to complete the square starting with getting that 9,000 kind of out of our way over to the other side. Instead of a equals, or that a equals, it's just like a y equals. So we have a minus 9,000 equals negative 5t squared plus 80t. We want to complete the square over here. Well, we don't want this negative 5 in front of the t squared. We can't divide it out to get rid of it, but we can factor it out. So we're going to factor a negative 5 out of both of these terms. So it's kind of like a GCF, but if you notice, I didn't include a t. I just don't want that negative 5 in front of the t squared. And I notice we can factor a negative 5 out of both of those. So that leaves you with t squared. If you factor a negative 5 out of 80, it leaves you with a negative 16 t. I'm going to close the parenthesis, but I'm going to leave a space, and I'll show you why in a second. I'm going to carry down the a minus 9,000. Okay, so there's our first difference, is if you have a number in front of your squared variable, you do want to factor that out front so you have just the squared variable, so t squared minus 16t. This part we got, we can take our b value, and notice our b value has changed. Now it's a negative 16. We're going to divide that by 2, and we're going to square that. So this 64 is going to go inside our parentheses, plus 64. Now here's the second difference. We put a 64 in here, right? But because of the negative 5 out front, this negative 5 is representing multiplication with this trinomial. So negative 5 times t squared, negative 5 times negative 16t, and negative 5 times 64. So even though we wrote in a 64, we actually put in a value of negative 5 times 64. So when we come over here to add this to the other side of our equation to keep it balanced, we're not adding in a 64, we're adding in a 5 times 64, excuse me, negative 5 times 64. So whatever we factored out gets multiplied with that value we're adding in to complete the square, and that's what we counterbalance with. Okay, so let's clean this up a little bit. We have a minus 9 thousand and then negative 5 times 64 is a negative 320 equals over here we have negative 5 times t squared minus 16t plus 64. 
All right, so we'll go ahead and combine those. Negative 9,000 minus 300 is A minus 9,000, excuse me, I just said 300, but it's 320 equals. This negative five is gonna stay out front, but we can factor this trinomial. We, we made it, we created it so that we could. Find factors of 64 that add up to negative 16. That's gonna be a negative eight and negative eight. So we're gonna say X minus eight squared. And then we wanna go back and solve for A. So we're gonna add 9,320 to both sides. So we have, for our equation, A equals negative five times x minus eight squared plus 9,320. Because we are now in vertex form, we can identify that the vertex is tricky x positive eight and then 9,000 320. So first question, what is the maximum altitude? The maximum altitude is going to be that y coordinate. And then we're in meters. And then what time does the plane reach the maximum altitude? So the plane reaches the max altitude after, that's what the x-coordinate tells us, eight seconds. Okay, now that we saw how to do that, let's run through one more. This one will go a little bit faster. When it says finding the minimum value of the function, if you can get your vertex, you know how vertex has a xy coordinate, well maybe I should call it hk from vertex form. It's that k, the y value, that gives us a max or a min, not both, one or the other. So if they're asking for the minimum value, we want the y coordinate of the vertex. So to do that, we're gonna take this 105 and get that to the other side first by subtracting 105 from both sides. So our equation, we have y minus 105 equals 7x squared plus 168x. All right, we're gonna complete the square over here, but we don't want that seven in front of the x squared. So we're gonna factor that out of just, just factor the seven out. That's gonna leave you with x squared. 168 divided by seven is 24. I'm going to close the parentheses, but leave a space because I know I'm going to add in a C value right here. I'll carry down the Y minus 105. All right, let's complete the square. We take our new B value of 24. We divide it by 2 and we get 12. And we square that, 144. That's what we add in there. But what do we add to the other side? So remember, we added in 144, that's what we're gonna write down, actually why don't I write it in, plus 144, but we actually are adding in a value of 144 times seven. So we're gonna add in seven times 144 to the other side. Okay, so that's y minus 105, seven times 144, is 1008 and it's positive so plus 1008 equals over here we have 7 times x squared plus 24x plus 144 okay we can add those together negative 105 plus 1008 is y plus 903 equals that 7 is going to stay there and we're going to factor this Factors of 144 that add up to 24, 12 and 12. So x plus 12 squared. Let's get the y alone by subtracting 903 from both sides. So we have y equals seven times x plus 12 squared minus 903. That allows us to identify the vertex of 12 not 12, 
tricky x, I almost got tricked, negative 12, negative 903. Which one of those is the max or min? That is going to be our y coordinate. And they did ask for a minimum, so we know that our minimum is equal to negative 903.